Hello again, everyone. This is Maximo McGee. Today, we're at Blizzard headquarters checking out Diablo 3. And to help me do that, I'm joined by Leonard Boyarski. Leonard, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for coming. So, Leonard, um, the Diablo series obviously has a, uh, a very rich history, much like the uh, Blizzard's other games. Can you uh, perhaps briefly sum up the uh, events of the uh, previous two Diablo games for us? Uh, the briefly is the difficult part. Um, in Diablo 1, you came to the town of Tristram, where Diablo had been captured and um, sealed beneath a, a monastery that eventually became a cathedral uh, underneath the town of Tristram, and the town of Tristram grew up around it. And uh, so you come to this town of Tristram after Diablo has been released, and you fight your way through these catacombs, and you defeat Diablo. Um, but Diablo is like great evil, it, it can't really be destroyed, so you take his soul stone and you jam it into your head. And then Diablo 2, as a hero, are following uh, a person known as the Dark Wanderer, and he's going to the east to release his brothers, who were also um, captured in, into these soul stones and, and hidden in various places around the world. So uh, you follow the Dark Wanderer, and he's becoming more and more um, possessed by Diablo as the game progresses. You finally end up defeating him and his brother Mephisto, but Bale, their third brother, escapes. So in Diablo uh, 2, Lord of Destruction, you follow uh, Bale to this place called Mount Ariet, which houses the World Stone, which is this artifact of, of ancient power. Um, it is what the whole world is built around. It focuses power. It uh, actually controls mankind from expressing their power um, because mankind is the offspring of angels and demons. So this, this World Stone is a very important artifact because it has all these powers. And uh, Bale, his basic job is to corrupt the World Stone. So he ends up corrupting the World Stone before you can stop him. You end up defeating him. But uh, Tyrael, the Archangel of Justice, um, feels he has no uh, choice but to destroy the World Stone because it has been corrupted and this will corrupt all of mankind. So Tyrael destroys this World Stone at the very end of uh, Lord of Destruction. And then you're left with the cliffhanger of what happens then because this World Stone, amongst its any other, m many other properties, um, kept heaven and hell from having large armies on Sanctuary, um, which is the name of, of the place where Diablo takes place. Now, for Diablo 3, could you go ahead and set up, um, when does this game take place in like comparison to Diablo 2? I imagine it's a little bit ways in the future. Yes, Diablo 3 takes place 20 years after the events of Diablo uh, 2, uh, Lord of Destruction. And uh, a lot has happened since then. After Tyrael destroyed the World Stone, um, it's kind of like a lull happened. People don't live very long in this world except for Deckard Cain, who seems to be immortal. Um, so a lot of people, there's not a lot of people around who remember what it was like back in the days of Diablo 2. And uh, there hasn't been a lot of demon activity, everything's been kind of quiet. So a lot of people are thinking, you know, you know, people know that there are demons because sorcerers and wizards can summon demons. But they're thinking, you know, this is, you know, this great battle between heaven and hell. This sounds kind of like a conspiracy theory. So a lot of people are dismissing that. Um, and. To just that's the state of the world and 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 Deckard Cain has been frantically trying for the past 20 years to put together pieces of this prophecy that he believes is the key to defeating the last two lords of hell Belial and Asbadan who are the only two you didn't kill in the other other games um, and so he's been spending his life trying to hunt down these clues that he feels are going to save mankind when the invasion actually comes now, is there any chance in Diablo 3 we might see humanity being forced to finally make that decision between siding with heaven or siding with hell? Uh, there's a good chance that that might happen in Diablo 3. Uh, I don't want to give too much away, but one of the very interesting things about the World Stone is that, like I was saying, it um, kind of clamps down on mankind's power. Since they are the offspring of angels and demons, they have the potential to become more powerful than angels and demons. Well, the World Stone has been destroyed. It was destroyed at the end of uh, Lord Destruction, like I was saying. So what does that mean for mankind? Well, you as the hero are you know, starting to um, show these powers you know that's why you have all these great abilities that you can use throughout the game so as you grow in power you know heaven and hell will definitely take it take an interest in you all right so is there anything else you'd like to touch on before we wrap it up here um no i'm glad you guys took the time to come out and i hope you enjoyed playing the the demo and uh i'm just really excited for everybody to to finally see what we've been working on all right well thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us thank you and we can't wait to get our hands on the game. 
So there you have it, folks, a look at Diablo 3. As always, stay tuned for more information.